This is Opposite Attractions, Season 3, Episode 1. The Carnival Kids. The challenge? Create a brand new theme park. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the world-famous Opposite Attractions Podcast. I am your skipper for the evening, Scotty Moore, joined as always by my co-skipper, Jim The Rock Murphy. (laughs) That makes no sense out of any kind of context. Apologies. Yeah, if you guys were watching on Twitch, you'd know that me and Jim have just been riffing on the fact that God, I want I want to be on the Jungle Cruise boat with Dwayne on it. Well, he's making the movie, so. Well, I, it's not gonna become a Johnny Depp situation, I don't think. We're they, right. they put him on instead of the instead of the rhino chasing the people up. It's actually it's an it's animatronic just rock. rock. No. no, it's actually it's actually a rhino, the man beast. Oh yeah, yeah. Get your monkey ass down here! All right, Rocky, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> So man, season three, and we've only just begun. We've only just begun to fucking make. We are a carpenters, theme park. carpenters of magic. Oh man, it, and wonder. <laughs> and yeah, dude, I don't. Ooh, I just remembered. Uh, uh fast, uh, pass fast. Um. Oh shit! Is there a new it, episode it, of Pass Fast? So, so uh, Cedar Point opened uh, Steel Vengeance in the space that Mean Street used to be in. It's two hundred and five feet tall. It is hybrid wooden steel. It has a ninety degree drop. It goes seventy four miles an hour, something like that. It breaks a bunch of records for like hybrid. Did we talk? Coasters. We talked about this on the show as well, didn't we? Uh, well, it was opening, but apparently on its first day of opening, two of the trains hit together, and four people were ho- uh, sent to the hospital. Holy shit! And the ride was closed after that for at least a, at least the rest of that day. I don't know if it has since reopened. I assume maybe. Well, the show. But must I don't know. Go it's been a couple days. The show must go on, Jim Murphy. They, they did bump. They they bumped at the uh, in the unload area, and apparently four people were like, "We need to go to the doctor." No, fuck it. They might have been, and I don't know how severe those four were. Like maybe they were just trying to get like free season passes or something. But See, still, like they did bump, and that would probably suck because that the, the the Mean Street roller coaster was pretty shitty. Uh, and anything, I think anything they put on that land is probably cursed. Well, yeah. Not only that, though, you have to imagine the fear going through your body of I'm just in line, and now all of a sudden I've gotten bumped. Who knows what's gonna happen when I go on this <laughs> manic thing that's gonna kill me. No, they were apparent. I think what happened was is people were getting off, and another car came behind them, and instead of stopping, it just kind of kept going. Oh, and I don't them. think it was going like forty miles an hour, but it was going fast enough that apparently four people felt the need to go to the doctor. See, for me, like any theme park that's, and I guess it's just because I haven't been to a lot of theme parks that are not Disney or Universal. But I don't trust him, Jim Murphy. I don't trust him. <laughs> I don't consider bit. Cedar Point to be an ame- a theme park. It is an amusement park, and that is the end of that discussion. Okay, yeah, I I, I use them interchangeably, but yeah, like I do not. <laughs> there's a there's a fine line. All right, you side. fucking nerd. <laughs> like it, like an Angry Beavers episode. There is a line. Yeah, and so uh, I just feel like anything that's below Disney quality, I will get a lot of fear. <laughs> just so much fear going through my veins on any ride and that's why i try to avoid those types of places like i'm sure i wouldn't mind riding steel vengeance but i'd have to have headphones in and treat it like rock and roller coaster and just about listening <laughs> to like some limp biscuit the, the whole the, time the uh the 90 degree drop i saw a picture it's not like it goes 90 degrees straight down for like 200 feet yeah it's like the first 100 feet or probably not even that far that's usually how they do it it's and then it just goes and then it's slowly like it doesn't even slowly even angle out it's just like down and then angle yeah yeah well, it seems kind of bad. I'm trying to remember how the one at... I guess it's because the incline portion of it is so long that it makes it the decline part seem even longer, but uh, Rock and Ro- or Rip Ride Rocket 
at Universal. If you look at it from the outside, dude, it's just a fucking inn. It is straight up, a little bit of a hook, and then you just go straight down to hell. And but it, it, is that actually what it actually is, though? That's what I was just thinking about, because I know the... I know the uh, front half where you're going up. I know for a fact that part is a uh, straight up intense because you're just kind of sat there staring up into space and realizing you've made a Wait horrible a mistake while Fred Durst in the, your ear is just like, I have some hands down. Let's go, boy. Okay, that is pretty much straight up. What the hell? I know, and I've ridden it. Are you Are you laying back or... Like, yeah, dude, you are straight up. You go balls. from seated to staring this, at the sky. Some of these pictures make it almost look like it's past ninety. I could see like, that. Like it, like like where you're actually going back out. <laughs> Maybe oh, yeah. it's just shitty pictures, but it looks like it's this. Like you're going up this side. Mm -hmm. Have we discussed? Speaking of shitty, that's bad. Speaking of shitty rides. Although Rip Red Arc is not shitty, it allows you to ride a roller coaster while listening to the dulcet tones of Fred Durst, so obviously <laughs> it's not. But have I told on the podcast the story about a certain ride at Universal Studios? I don't e. want. No, not E.T. That e. The E.T. ride is glorious, but no, this is a ride. Um, I don't want to name it because I don't want people to stop getting on this ride. But it is a ride. At Universal Studios, and it is a drop ride. Fuck, there's only one drop ride at Universal Studios. Okay, so anyways, I used to work outside of said drop ride, and one day uh, at the arcade, the people working there would come down and be like, yeah, man, would you like, can we get some candy? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I don't give a shit. Here, take a tattoo <laughs> hole. So I'd hand them some candy, and they're like, you're fucking awesome, man. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And so we start talking about the ride and stuff like that. And he goes, yeah, yeah, have you ever rode it? And I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't do drop rides. I'm, I'm, I fucking hate heights, despite the fact that I can ride Rip Ride Rocket with no problem. Uh, I'm like, I don't like heights, so I'm not really that into it. He's like, oh, good, you're a smart man. Have you rode it, like, to one of my coworkers? Oh, yeah, I love that ride. Okay, cool. Don't listen to what I'm about to tell you, then. And <laughs> basically, they've got these buckles like, you know, this normal buckle-in system for a drop ride. And he goes, one day, I went out there, and I don't know what drove me to do this, but, you know, the lock that keeps you in place and stops you from flying out and fucking dying? Yeah. You see my glasses? Yeah. You see this little metal part that hooks around your ear? Yeah, I can unlock every single one of those belts with this fucking, <laughs> with my glasses. So, yeah, it's probably not the straightest thing. We've had bolts fall off of it before. Now, this was like two years ago, so I'm sure it's been repaired since then. Or maybe not. You may die. But <laughs> otherwise, yeah, that was why I realized I'm never riding any I've, drop rides ever. I I'm glad I didn't have to work in attractions just because of all of the weird crap that, like, I would find out about, like, my favorite ride ever. Yeah. Like, A, certain rides I definitely don't want to see with the lights on. Like, Space I don't want to be in the Haunted Mansion with the lights on. Dude. That would creep me out. I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like it would ruin any creepiness it had. Well, I just feel like it's a giant warehouse of a building, and there's plenty of places for, like, hazing to take place in there. <laughs> I don't want to put myself in into that position yeah yeah i could, yeah, I've, i could see yeah. that apparently one of my friends now works at uh rock and roller coaster and so now whenever when i go back down there she is getting fucking hassled to get me on the front of that ride like skip the line front of the ride or just no like, like I, <laughs> I walk in through i actually walk the track is what i'm going for I'll climb up and down the track, walk around the whole thing. Dude, I got mad. The other day, my uh, my, my ex... It's not a very big coaster. It only lasts like 80 seconds or something. Yeah, I know, but it, I, it's kind of like... You could probably sprint it. 
<laughs> well, I was gonna say it's kind of like you know on Google Maps you can put in either walking or <laughs> walking or driving distance, and there's usually a huge difference. It's actually quite a trek to get along that path. Especially where you go up at like a 75, 60 degree angle for a while, going 60 miles per hour. But no, the other day, uh, one of my friends put on Instagram that she got to do a, basically a backstage tour of the Haunted Mansion. I've done that, yes. Why did you do like an Obama thumb point when you, you're like, yes, I have done that. It's a yeah, very, I did, I... very good trip. Um, I did, uh, I, I, the only place they took us was into the, ball, underneath the ballroom. That was it. Okay, that seems cool. Yeah, I don't know where else she went. I just know she got, like, this certificate that's just, like, Haunted Mansion, like, uh, honorary host. Caretaker. Uh, is that, yeah, honorary caretaker. And I was like, oh, yeah, you can go fuck yourself. I want that more than anything else in the entire world. How dare Yeah, I got you. to see the, I got to see the ballroom, like, the, the behind the glass of the ballroom, which was creepy enough. You got to see the balls. Yeah. Because you walk in and they're like, it's very dark and there's um, colored tape everywhere, like like glow tape. Yeah. And they're like, uh, if you see a horizontal, stay beside that. If you see a vertical, you're probably going to run into that. Like it was like the mark in the posts and stuff. So you're like walking through like the floor's tape to tell you exactly where to walk. Because if literally you step a foot off of that, you're going to run into a, a like a support beam. A support beam. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. So was that dark? Yeah. It was, it, the thing is, like, you come out from, like, daylight, you walk into this little room that's probably, like, 15 feet long, probably not even that long, and it's, like, a little dimmer in there, and then you open, they open a door, and you step through, and they're like, also, if you step past this line, you're gonna be on the ride, because the glass will reflect you. Oh, shit! So they're like, was, do not do that. Oh, was the ride running at this time? Yes, so, it was, it damn was, it! It was nine... It was like 9.15 in the morning or 9.25 in the morning. Literally, the tour was, you you get there like 8, yeah. and they spend from like 8 to 9 walking you up Main Street and talking, and then by the time you get to the Haunted Mansion, it's literally like 8.57, and you're the first people that get on it. That's sick. That's pretty awesome. However, I would get kicked out of Disney World immediately because I would run into the area where I would be on the ride and just start <laughs> fucking ballroom dancing or something. They're like, I've never seen that weird ginger boy in the ride before. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh man, one of my one of my buddies at work gave me the ultimate ultimate bucket list item, which is he was just like, yeah, I might have gotten head on the haunted mansion. <laughs> what? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my girlfriend looked at me, was like, are there cameras on here? I said, probably not. And then she just started, you know, taking me to Pound Town. <laughs> At which point I stopped and just looked. And I'm like, there are almost certainly cameras all over that there's ride. A, and he's like, yeah, there's yeah, a no. story. There's a story of a uh, honeymooning couple that went on Pirates, and they said, "We want a boat to ourselves. This is our favorite ride." And they were like, "Sure, whatever," because there's cameras. They can see if there's anything crazy going on. And they said the the first camera is after the drop yeah and so they go down the drop and they're looking at the camera and they only see one of them <laughs> and they're like oh crap problem but they keep an eye on them like they're not because they don't hear any alarms going off like where people stepped on anything off like out of the water so they get to the next camera and now the one that was missing is there and the one that was there is missing <laughs> And this, like, and then they went around to walkie the third. talkies. There are walkie talkies, and this information spread through the park like wildfire, and everyone knew exactly who they were. Well, my favorite was when they got to the third camera, and they were both gone, but Johnny Depp was there. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. Now, I, I will say, I thought this story was going to be a lot better because I thought it was going to be. She wasn't in the cart anymore because he was getting head. Then the drop happened, and then she fucking just flew out of the cart. Well, She's gone. Have fingers on that. So, Jim, this is a podcast. 
That's it. <laughs> this, is a, this is a podcast where we build our own theme park, even though the fr- I went on Reddit and like they were just like, I can't stand podcasts that don't get to the point and they just kind of <laughs> talk for 10 minutes. I'm like, you would not be a fan of opposite <laughs> attractions. <laughs> but this is a podcast where we build our own theme park. And this season, you Ooh. decided to go for something a little bit different. We talked about it at the end of uh, the last last episode of season two would you like to kind of give people the rundown starring I, I, Dwayne the Rock Johnson uh I'm Sean William Scott yes yeah well actually was that Johnny Knoxville I don't remember um welcome to Jackass that's uh let's see what was it so we are going to do a park wherein you control half and I control half yeah and I don't know exactly what the like, my original idea was the challenge would be that, like, whatever it was, we would basically both be building the same thing on either side. Yeah, we just kind of change up the way it is. I, it's kind of like the most off the fucking rails we can go. Because yeah. now we don't have themes to go off of. We don't have any yeah, but restrictions. You can have a theme to go off of because your side of the park could have a theme. Oh, my boy. Just wait to get into how intense I've mapped this bitch out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because uh, my half of this park, firstly, very dick shaped. Um, <laughs> so hold on, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I I don't know how many people at home can see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. So uh, you can actually, if you're watching on Twitch or YouTube. You can see my little design here, where at the front you have this kind of Main Street-like shaft that leads up into a ball, and the ball is going to be like an, an, an adventure adventure zone, no, like an adventure land, and so each of these balls are like that, except there's four balls. The reason why is because then there's like this... A secondary walkway leading from the two balls. So now it looks like we've got more digs <laughs> on both sides. And so uh, and, and the, the, the two peni from these link up underneath this bridge area to have like this underground zone. And so essentially you walk in across this bridge. Because I figure we're going to kind of have the same setup as like last time almost to where you have this walkway up to a main intersection yes that, i think that's the easiest way to do yeah, it yeah that mean you kind of agree on and then they just kind of go off into two separate areas that you can take care of which is either jimbo way or badass <laughs> junction which is mine and so uh, you know what jim it's it's just choose your own adventure now you're walking into Badass Junction, and you reach uh, basically this center section where you have the four lands surrounding you. Technically, there's even more. There's a lot of lands going on here. But uh, you've got four base as of right now. One upper left, lower left, upper right, lower right. Where would you like to start? <laughs> you start wherever you want. Okay, well, if you went to the upper left, you know, Jim, a lot of people think I, I'm uncouth. I'm a, I'm a fucking swear boy. I'm an insulter. And that's why I've got this section, which I'm not yelled, like, named correctly. But I, right now I've just put the words touch a class, and I don't know what that means. But it's kind of, it, it's a very, it, it's interactive, and it's very um, immersive. An immersive, like, 1930s bar experience where you go in, there's, like, jazz music playing. It's real classy. There's, like, people day. It's Dapper Day every day in this fucking section. It's dope as hell. There could probably be some rides based on the 1930s and gangsters and shit. Um, now, if you go directly down from that into Ball 2, that's where you find Ireland. And that's just really me getting into my heritage. It's a whole lot of Irish. There's a beautiful Irish fields. There's uh, some bars where you can get some fine Irish whiskeys and some scotch. I know that's technically Scottish, but fuck you. I'm both <laughs> of them. And so you kind of enjoy that section for a while. 
And I realized, like, if I'm really gonna, if this is opposite attractions, the theme park, why don't I just bring in all the podcasts that I do? And that's why, uh, if you turn, basically, if you start going down uh, the third dick that pops off of these two balls, that's where you get to Booze Junction, where it's just nothing but a shit ton of bars and also a theater where musicians can perform and where every week a live episode of a load of BS is recorded. And then as you go down underneath the bridge, there's like this cool dive bar area where, the, you know, it's just kind of sketchy and dive bar but it's really cool. It's kind of like the 80s, like, vomited in this section. And so now you go under the bridge, and this is where we approach the next podcast, because now we're at Fight Boys Corner, which has a wrestling ring. It's got a place where we can record Fight Boys live. It's got a bunch of cool stuff, and it's going to have, like, wrestling stuff as well. All right, so now after that, I, I you know, I, a lot of people... I, I want... I have a, I have a suggestion. Okay. Um, if, if you're... If you are... If you and Blake are basically going to be characters, I desperately want, like, a walk around Scotty and walk around Blake that's like a big head. <laughs> yes! I need that! I need that shit Like, so you can get bad. your pictures taken, and they're the ones that actually do the live recording. <laughs> okay, yeah. Now, um, the, the left half of my park, which is what we just explored, is kind of the... That's the sketchy part. That's the dirty <laughs> boy part. That's where you get all the alcohol. Oh, which, by the way, I've come up with a very innovative system for this park, which is that each ride has a drink minimum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> children don't have to follow this, but the adults do. So, like, super scary roller coasters, just a two-drink minimum. We don't want you too tipsy. But, like, the really fucking dope kitty rides that have that E.T. vibe... Uh, or like the uh, Los Tres Caballeros, that's got like a five drink minimum in our app that comes with you. We'll measure how many just, drinks you've had. Just put it in my veins. Yeah. All right. So now we're getting into like the kitty section, and this is where it stops getting funny, uh, because now you're going up Dick Two, and this is where you hit like the creativity corner, where it's kind of like the Epcot Arts Festival all the fucking time so there's like this giant mural that's constantly getting repainted and constantly doing stuff like that there are workshops for like writing and creation it's really to encourage people to try to get into their creative side and make some beautiful stuff while they're at it now here's where we go up the dick to the other two balls uh the top half is just the fun zone I've yet to figure out what I'm actually going to call it, but this is kind of like your kitty area. This is where all your children go play. This is where all the kid rides are. And this is where all the drink minimums for the ride go drastically higher because holy shit, they're really dope when you're drunk. So you got all that. You got kitty rides and stuff like that. There is still an open bar. And then finally we go down to ball number four, the final segment of my part. And it is, in fact, the returning favorite of the audience, Branson fucking Landia. It, <laughs> and it's like a mini, it's, it's essentially my idea for Branson Landia, except it's like a miniature uh, uh, world showcase, except it's just got like fucking Sevierville, Tennessee. It's got Branson. It's got Nashville. It's just got that sketchy part. And it's just around the outside of the ball. And that's where you go hang out with all that stuff at. That's just my tribute to the South right there. Also, in the middle of it, just made this executive decision. Big fucking lake. Because all my favorite parks have a big fucking lake in the middle of them. So that's that's the tour. That's the grand tour. But let me just kind of give you a little bit more of the vibe you're going to get. Um, all of the rides, every ride has a custom drink to go with it, which means that my season is going to get real difficult because I also have to come up with a mixed drink based on the ride. I may <laughs> give that up very quickly. Um, just come up with a name. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, well, just a majority... Uh, 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 okay, so you know how... Disney, when you go to, like, at Magic Kingdom, when you go to Tomorrowland, 
the music is still there, but it just kind of changes how the music is played. You yes. know, it gets like technological. Well, uh, it's literally nothing but Nickelback in my park. It just <laughs> changes depending on what section you go into. So, like, you go into the Ireland section, it's played on like a mandolin and violin. It's very beautiful. <laughs> Touch of Class has it played on, like, some smooth jazz covers. Well, we all just want to be big rock stars and live in our South Classic Gen 15 cars. <laughs> oh, no. And then, of course, when you go down to the dive bar section, that's when it just really cranks in with, like, some Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. I know that's Elton John, but Nickelback did a dope cover of it. Fight me. And so, like, <laughs> everywhere you go, it just kind of changes the Nickelback music you hear. Uh, like I said, there is a concert stage. Uh, looks like the 80s vomited on a dive bar. Um, the, the mascot for my side of the park is Rat Fink. I don't know if you know who Rat... Okay. <laughs> I'm judging by that laugh, you know who Rat Fink is. <laughs> That's my boy. Like the cartoon, like the rat, like the... Like the 70s, like, or 1960s, 70s, like... That nasty green rat... That nasty green Beavis and Butthead style rat. Um, oh my god. Let's see. Oh, there's going to be a tattoo parlor in the dive bar section. It gives like temporary tattoos to kids. And if you have an appointment, you can get a tattoo at your favorite theme park. Also all drunk. And then um, and my last note here, it just says the rides are better than gyms. <laughs> I'm sure they will be. All right, so that's my that's oh, my. Oh Jesus! Second. How do I follow that up? I know, dude. This is the hardest I've ever worked, and I worked for like ten minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. So my side of the park seems very tame in comparison, as it probably should be. Yours given doesn't who we have are. three interlocking dicks. <laughs> it only has two. Damn it. Um, I don't really have a, I didn't really think about layout too much, although I did kind of want to break it into to two sections Yeah. because I didn't really know what our challenges would be or how we would do that. But since I am doing a theme park and I can't use IP that is already existing, which is what I would do if I could, my side of the park is actually very meta in that it focuses on the uh, past and future of theme parks in general. Yeah. So, basically, whatever the ride is that you're getting onto, mm -hmm. depending, well, depending on the ride, if it is like an old, if it is kind of like an updated old-timey type of ride, or something that's like a ride that's been around for a while, like a ride style that's been around for like a roller coaster, yeah. like the queue would be like, the history of the roller coaster it'd be educational oh okay fuck uh, your side way. of the park <laughs> um and like the future <laughs> like if there was like a ride that was like something new that like nobody had ever really seen before like that that cue would be more like look at all this other crazy shit we can do hmm. I just... and it would very be it'd be very much like almost showing you how the rides work before you got on them Okay, so it's like the pin and teller of, of theme parks. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there could be a level of kind of fucking with people. Yeah. In there, I think that would work fine. But it would very much be like you're, you're walking into a theme park that is about theme parks. It's very, like, Ouroboros like that. It's eating its own yeah. asshole. I really enjoy, like, the concept of, like, I know we did this last season, but stealing rides from other theme parks, but rides that have evolved a lot over the years. And, like, the first part of the ride is the original one, then, like, an evolved for the next section. That, I thought about that, you know, it, it really depends on what the ride type is. So, wait, what you're saying is you don't want to have an Avengers Infinity War section of, like, fit, <laughs> a journey into imagination where Dreamfinder's just like, Figman, I don't feel too good, and then he just fucking goes away. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert! I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I guess, no, I guess I shouldn't have spoiled the fact that fucking Figment dies in Infinity War. 
I haven't checked the website on that one, so I don't know if that's... No, no, it's true. It's definitely true. <laughs> oh, man. So, wait, is that all? Is that is that your shit, man? Yeah, I, I don't... Like I said, Improv. it depends on what... Improv. It depends on... <laughs> It, de- it does depend wholly on what we decide our challenges are each week as to what... I feel like that is what would flesh it out. Yeah. I, f- I do feel like because of who I am, there would be a very Disney-ish vibe as far as, like, the things like you said, like, where, like, the, like the music and where you would obviously tell, like, I, I watched what Disney did and kind of just, like, copying it. Not copying it, like like cheaply Mm -hmm. but like yeah like okay like the the food's gonna be on this side and the shopping's gonna be on that side and there's gonna be trash cans everywhere all that kind of really weird stupid kind of theme park layout design stuff but it would like yeah it depends on what the rides are that were the attractions are that we're building as to how they would fit in i can see that the area See, with me, I just, I reached a section, uh, a, like, earlier today, I was like, okay, I really like the idea of doing the opposite attractions theme park, that's cool. But then I reached this moment of fear where I was like, wait a minute, that means I'm just off of the leash, and I'm gonna have to <laughs> rein myself in. Which is why I just was like, okay, I'll give myself six different sections, and each week I can yeah, be like, this even, can go I, here, this can go in Ireland, this can go here. I, I think that the way I'm looking at it is that I basically have two sections, but what happens in those two sections could spread out. It's, it's a work. It's definitely a work in progress. So it's almost like Epcot in, in concept. Yeah, just call it like, instead of just being progress land, it's work in progress land. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon our pixie dust land. <laughs> well, I was going to say, it's really like Epcot. Cause you've got the past, the concept of the past and then the future. And then I guess you could have some current day parts as well. I feel, well, I feel like the idea of, like, if you go to get on a roller coaster, like, maybe there can be stuff in the queue of, like, here's what, like, old roller coasters were like. Like, a kid has never seen, like, goddamn run the, like, shoot the shoot. Not shoot the shoot. That's not it. There's there's that one from, like, Coney Island where, like, you got on, like, a back of, like, a wooden horse and they sh- sent you down a goddamn rail. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like that, sh- like kids have never seen that crap. Not that I want to make a ride of that, but to put that like in the entrance, like see, like even if it like a virtual reality version of that crap. Yeah. Like like a little thing you can go in and you sit on like a carousel horse and then you have like a fucking pair of goggles or like a first person point of view of like what that would have felt like to like a kid in the nineteen tens before he died of like tuberculosis. Jim, I just realized we have made Epcot in this fucking park. Because so? we have this big-ass educational section where you could go and learn about shit or whatever. I don't know, because instead we're going to go get drunk in this other random theme park. With a lake in the middle of it. With a lake in the middle. Why is this? He- There's not even a guardrail around it. Why does this exist? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, guys. Why is the water orange? Why? What's this white stuff floating in the ocean? Look, these these dicks are real, my boy. I may put a ride in the middle of that lake. That's how my mind works. Yeah, I don't even... Th- I'm not thinking about layout because I need to know what the challenges are for the weeks. And then I can figure out where I would actually set them like puzzle pieces. Oh, man, I don't care. I'll tear the walls down. I don't give a <laughs> shit. I'll wreck shop. All right, so Jimbo, we've made a new theme park. I looked at the time and realized that I took up a thick majority of this episode with mine. Yeah, but and part I of apologize. it was you were was a bathroom break, so you're good. Yeah, it, well, it's all right, and uh, that's why I, since I took up most of this episode, I leave it to you to give us our challenge for next week. Good lord! What kind well, of you ride know, you want, boy? Well, I think we should just do what we usually do. And that is to, like... I I don't really want to use the phrase weenie, since you have, like, six of them already. Yeah. Mostly just visible from the air. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like we... you you, I feel like each side of the park should have, like, a flagship... Like, the thing that we're... Okay. I I mean, I know that we can't... That's not really, like, where you're going to build the same thing as me. 
But I feel like we have to start with something. We need our flagship is... ride. This is the ride that defines our sex. Like, Spaceship Earth, like Epcot has Spaceship yeah. we Earth, need we thing, need ours. Like, when people walk in the front gate, there will be giant billboards of, like, like mine's like, come visit such and such a ride, and yours is like you giving my sign the finger. Mine and just being says, like, no, guys. <laughs> mine says, fuck you, ride me. <laughs> No, see, the reason why I was about to interrupt you on the concept of the weenie is I feel like uh, the last episode of this season needs to be us making our weenie. And it needs to be the one ride that we actually consolidate on. We have to work together to build this ride because it's going to be basically when you walk up our main street, it's what you see. We can still do that, though. I just feel like... You could, you can, we can have like the anchor at each end, yeah. or whatever the fuck your circle of dicks is, your 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 uh, your bukkake of lands. Um, yours can be on that side, mine can be on their side, but then at the end we can do like the main middle. Yeah, I'm down with that. And also, it's called Bukaki Junction. Get it fucking right, Jim. Jesus. What's Christ. your function? <laughs> Bukaki Junction, what's your function? Squirting out sperm on faces and places. <laughs> and with that, we've been canceled from podcasting. I've just got the email. We've been canceled and removed. Twitter from says you. Twitter says the word smart has been taken from my username. Yes, it, no, it just I am now at apparently. Apparently, Jim. All right. That's actually that's my Xbox name. So there you oh, go. Oh shit. Well, Jim, I, I, you've kind of given it away, but where can they find you yes. on Twitter? I'm I, I'm on Twitter at apparently smart, and not many more other places. That's right. And you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. That's S C O T T Y E M O. Make sure to buy all my books on Amazon. Quiesel Corp. Quiesel Corp. Risen. B S versus the Gods. I'm a fucking four time author now, and that seems like a title I should not have earned. And then, of course, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the brand new novel, Quiesel Corp Revelations, the third in the trilogy. I finally have wrecked the Quiesel Corp story. It's completely over, and I really want you guys to read it. I was, I'm very proud of it, and I enjoyed writing it so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed reading it as much as I did. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, in addition to that, make sure to check out all the other BS Network programs. There's Fight Boys, the show where we talk about pro wrestling, or a load of BS, the show where... We're kind of just dicks for an hour. Like, there's not much I can go into. That's really all it is, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, make sure to pick up your Opposite Attraction merch online at merch.alotapurebs.com. We got six shirts over there right now for you. I'm probably going to put up some tumblers, some other cool stuff on there. So make sure to go pick it up for yourself at merch.alotapurebs.com. And before we get into Season 3... Y'all know you want to catch up. Y'all want to know you get all the references, understand what we're talking about, get into the deep lore of the show. And that's why you need to go to opposite-attractions.com and look at the last season where we built our interactive streaming theme park known as Vista. And then before that, our superhero theme park known as Apex. Oh, shit, we have to come up with a name for this park. <laughs> just Op. <laughs> it's just called Op. Well, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of op, if you want to find me or Jim on Twitter, you can do it at op at show. That's spelled O P P A T T S H O W. And after two weeks of being gone, it feels so damn good to say, are you down with O P P?